Hi again then guys and welcome to of course another breakdown of a specific vehicle from the 1.32 batch of cars to be added to the game and this one of course is hugely massively significant to the franchise and to the game and to the community as well for more reasons than one it's a Porsche of course and that alone is always a reason for excitement for many people in the community we had what was it like four Porsches to begin with I think and then many people were getting worried that we weren't going to get any more because there were none in the updates and then we had two at once two GT3s and they were great both of them are very good in their own way but then we had this this is not just another Porsche confirming that yes, Polyphony are in fact using that Porsche license to good effect. Not great effect, but good effect. We are getting them fairly consistently. But more than that, this is the first classic, like full on classic, not borderline 80s Porsche that we've ever had in the series. And I'm including Roof in that as well, because as I said, the borderline stuff is like the Yellow Bird or the CTR, where they're kind of classic supercars, but not really. This is a full on classic. Now, there are certain things about this car which are very appealing. The look, for instance, it's a cute, smooth, clean looking classic car. On the other hand, it's supremely expensive. <laughs> it's 1.2 million credits, which seems ridiculous for something that's barely N100. So what's the deal? Well, to sum up the Porsche 356 in this form in particular, which is incidentally a higher performance version, I would say you are paying 1.2 million for the car, not for what the car can do. So in other terms, if something like the Ford Model T were to come back, and it costs 20 million credits. You, in your right mind, would never think that you were paying 20 million because it's the best thing out there. Of course not. You're paying 20 million because of the car, because of its historical significance and how collectible it is. Likewise with this Porsche. Don't go into it expecting the best N100 car, because it categorically isn't. It is quick, and it is very fun, and it feels fast. But when I took it around the Nordschleifer, it was a good 15, 20 or so seconds slower than my classic Mini, also in N100. So it's not even close to being the fastest, because even that Mini can be pretty handily beaten by what is probably the most OP car in N100, the Honda S660. As far as classics go though, the Mini is a very, very good one, and a hard one to beat. This, on the other hand, if you're talking just value for money, of course cannot match up to that Mini. It will be beaten by it under most circumstances, apart from maybe top speed. Apart from that though, is it still worth buying? Well, that will depend very, very much on the individual player. If you're the kind of person who loves Porsche, or who loves classics, or who loves collecting really historical or expensive cars, like the High Rollers Club, in effect, then you'll love it. It's got plenty to love. It looks the part, it sounds pretty cool, the handling is interesting. It's not the best handling thing around, but it's not the worst either. So yeah, it has a ton of appeal to the right person. But you could argue that about most cars, so that's not necessarily a knock against it. So how does it perform? Well, I touched on this in my overarching review of the whole update. But one of the things that I like about this car the most is how authentic Polyphony made it feel. This car is, you could strongly argue, the closest thing to an actual Volkswagen Beetle that any Porsche has ever been. It's popular for people to call the 911 a Beetle. That's not the case anymore. It's far from it. And for most of its life, that hasn't really been the case. It's just a joke. Even my college tutor back in the day used to always refer to the 911 as a Beetle. Of course he knew it wasn't, but it's the joke. This one basically is a Beetle because it was way back in those early days when they took that tech, took it to the next level, and turned it into an exotic. And then, of course, we know how it went from there. So I love the fact that it actually does feel like a more powerful, more race-ready, lower center of gravity, wider Beetle. It handles like one. That's fantastic, because that's exactly what it should feel like. Now again, if you compare it to a Beetle, the Beetle is a whole lot cheaper, but of course doesn't have the same tuning range that this one has. Now, you start off with 107 horsepower, which is decent enough. Again, that's more than a Beetle of the time, of course, from a 1.5 engine. 
And in terms of torque, not too surprisingly for a flat engine vehicle, a boxer engine, it's pretty torquey. It's got 90 pound feet, which compares pretty well to the power. Of course, it's lightweight, it weighs 840 kilos straight off the bat, and the horsepower per ton is pretty respectable. It's 127, which doesn't sound amazing compared to most of the stuff that we talk about, but you've got to bear in mind that's from a car with barely over 100 horsepower anyway. So the only thing that's possibly disappointing to some people is the price. And as I said in my overarching review of the 1.23 download and update, it was a jarring price, just like a couple of the others are as well. But as many of you guys pointed out on Discord, these prices are actually pretty accurate if you compare them to the current values of these classic cars. And I do like to check out values of certain classics and used prices, but it just so happens that the ones in this pack don't tend to be the cars that I look up. Stuff like Dino's and, and Porsche 356's. So the price is actually not far off. In the real world, they're around 800, 900, a million. So yeah, 1.2 actually isn't that far off for a more performance-oriented model. So my overall thoughts as far as this one go aren't really mixed. Initially they could have been because of the price, but once I had time to think about it, to take a note of the real world prices, all that kind of stuff, of course, yeah, it makes sense. It all falls into place. Now, there are two totally separate parts of my brain which I could kick in at this point. I could say, is a car with 100 horsepower worth 1.2 million credits? No, it's not. Factually speaking, categorically, no. Doesn't matter what it is. Even if it had a turbine engine, factually, no, it would not be worth it. Simply because there are faster options for a lower price, by definition. However, if you're talking 1.2 million for one of the original Porsches, one of the most significant Porsches, one of the most collectible classic performance cars of all time, well, of course it's worth 1.2. From that point of view, it's a wonder it doesn't cost more. But I think if it did cost more, like 5 million or something, people would probably be disgusting by that price, because 1.2 million is hefty enough, especially when you first see it and aren't expecting it. I thought it might be four or 500,000 way off. <laughs> so overall, those are my thoughts on the 356. I am going to break down a tune for it, probably in N100 for those who want to use it. And as I said, it does have potential. It's just not going to beat everything, especially not the modern stuff like K cars. But overall, that's it for my thoughts. Great little classic addition to Porsche, very significant one. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Porsches we get in the future, because it's been fairly eclectic so far. But that's it for this pick. Of course, I will see you next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.